Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we're going to take a look at the sets of markers by Artify. Now I don't have all the sets. I have the 108 set and I have the 24 skin set. They also have uh, sets of 48 and 80 and 40 assorted, but the 40 assorted is kind of weird uh, because it's a different body and um, a different... The, col I, the color family seems to be the same, but different colors. And that's something that I thought was kind of interesting with these markers, um, is that the uh, in a lot of brands of markers, if you get the biggest set, it's going to have all the colors. But I've noticed in the Artify set, there are some duplications in the uh, other sets, but in order to get all the colors in the range, you would have to, um, you'd have to buy all the sets, because there'll be a few... Um, There'll be a few similar, a couple similar ones, but there's a lot of unique colors per set. So I thought that was kind of interesting um, and unusual. Like, for instance, the Ahuhu set, if you got the, you know, all of the, if you got the 48 set and then bought the 72 set, 48 of those colors would be in the 72 set. If you got the 120 set, 72 of those colors would be in the 120 set. You know, the each set builds, but each set contains all the colors of the smaller sets. Um, and that's not what they do here, but it's not a clean break between sets, so it's just kind of interesting. Now, the color, uh, the color range that these markers go on is the same as the Biennio, and it's also the same as the Altenu, which I found very exciting. This is an Altenu marker, by the way, um, and I like these markers. The Altenu markers do have a better brush tip. We'll get into that in a minute, um, but... Altenew has been releasing markers the last couple of years. They're up to 60 now, I believe, maybe, and they might have more to come very shortly. Um, and they have refills. So when they release markers, they release refills. So um, you could purchase refills from Altenew to fill these markers. Of course, there are more markers in the Artify range than Altenew, but, you know, you could get close or, you know, Hopefully the ones you'd run out of would be the ones that Altenew has already come out with. So I thought that was pretty exciting. So um, let's take a look at the swatches um, and the markers. And like, there's so much to look at here. Um, by the way, I also want to mention that uh, these were sent to me for review purposes from Artify. The markers range from between 55 cents a piece in the big set to um, 79 cents in the small set currently. Um, obviously melt it out, multiply it out. I think it's like around 60 for this and it's around... 20 for this. Um, so, you know, in the ballpark anyway. Um, and, well, let's take a look. So the first thing you might notice when you look at these markers is that they look familiar. They look kind of like some other markers that we have seen on the market before. So when I first was contacted by Artify, I'd actually been aware of their markers because their markers looked like the Bayanu brush markers. Um, and I will grab, I got my Bayanu brush marker set. I have the older set. They have re-released their markers in a cloth bag and I think they've changed the body type as well. So I can't vouch for those markers now, but I'll just grab one right there just to show you the similarities and the differences. So um, the bodies are the same, rounded triangular. They've got the caps with a little Little bit of a, of a split on the on the sides and they've got a little um, just a little score line almost in there there's an indication showing you where the brush end is in both markers and um, there's actually a barcode on the on the uh, biennio that tells you what color it is and the color number which I like the artifies don't have that most markers don't seem to have that detail which I, I think is kind of too bad in case you've got a bunch of markers uncapped you gotta kind of hope you've got the right cap that you're putting back on there so let's take a look at the brush markers here. This is the Art and um, Artify. I want to say Art and Fly because I have the Art and Fly. Those are really those are really fantastic markers. This is the Bayan. You know, and I made a swatch to go right on the body because I thought the uh, you know because the colors never perfectly re, um, matched on the cap. And just for you know what, I wonder if I have a yellow all to new marker that I could show. Yes. Hey, look at that. I think it's the same color, too. Ha, 204. Oh, it, it's the same as the uh, the Bayanu one, anyway. Actually, hey, you know what? Let's compare apples to apples. I got the Altenew one. I mean, I got the Art and, Art and Fly one right there. These are all Y204s. That's, uh, oh, the Altenew has a bullet tip and a brush tip, and the other ones have brush and chisel. Just thought I'd mention that. So, we can we can do a little apples to apples comparison here. There's a little shadow there. I'm just going to push that back and uh, zoom you in a little bit. Um, so, Bayanio and, um, and the Art and Fly has both have white matte rounded triangular barrels and they have the same cap style. The Altenu has a rounded triangular barrel. It is a matte black instead of matte white and it has um, a 
bullet instead of a chisel tip. So I'll just show you that too so we can compare. Now there, uh, there is more differences than, um, than just the color of the barrels here and the nib type. Um, and we're going to get into that. The first thing I'm going to show you here is the brush nib because that's what we're all interested in, right? We're all very interested in those brush nibs. So the, um, I'm going to show you the biennial first. The biennial has an extremely flexible rubbery Japanese style nib. And I really like this. This is my favorite type of nib. This is like the nib that's on the Copics, the Blick Studios, the Alta News, um, Art and Fly. It's a, it's a really nice high quality nib. The Alta News also have that same type of really flexible non-fraying nib. Now the Artify, I was hoping would have the same type of nib, but it doesn't. It's, a, it's fairly flexible, but it's stiffer and it's not as responsive. And I do fear that these are going to fray. I was a little disappointed in that. Not that I was surprised because of the price of the marker, but I was a little disappointed because they uh, state on their listing that they have a, um, that they have a like superior nib to their competitors, which, um, they showed the flippable nibs that like a hoo hoo has, and I think Cali Art might have. I'm not sure because um, I don't have the Cali Art markers, but um, they they show that as a comparison, and I'm thinking, no, these feel almost identical to the Ohuhu nibs, I gotta say. Um, so the brush and I mean the chisel end on the Artify, it looks to be actually the same thing as a Biennio. I thought it might have looked a little bit fatter, but it's about the same as a Biennio. Um, but the brush tip isn't quite as good. Now, I'm not sure if Biennio has changed their brush tip because they have dropped the price on their markers uh, to be, their 72 set is now around $50, and it used to be like $120 when it came in the case like I just showed you. Um, with bodies like this so I don't know if they have changed their nibs or not I hope not because I really love their nibs but I don't know how they can do those nibs at that price because to buy like you can buy all new nibs six bucks for a three pack cheaper than Copic the refills are cheaper than Copic you get 30 milliliters for um for six bucks as opposed to 12 milliliters for six bucks from Copic so um you know if you did fray a nib you could purchase the Altenew nib and um and you know, pop it right in there. I think that would be an, uh, like a, a really nice solution, especially if it's a color that Altenew sells and you can get refill ink. Otherwise, I mean, I think the nibs are gonna last as long as the ink does. That's just, you know, that's just something that you might wanna do. Now, I did see another issue with the Artify markers that did not, that I haven't seen in another marker before. Also, I wanted to mention that the Artix markers have the same body. So if you like the feeling of the Artix Alp markers, which I actually, I do like the feeling of the Artix, Artix Alp markers, they have a bullet and a, um, and a chisel. Um, if you like the feeling of those markers, it's the same body. It's the same body, just different caps. Artix has those pretty uh, kind of cloud uh, looking caps to them, but it's the same nice thick matte plastic that just feels really good in your hand, um, not slippery, doesn't roll, it's just a nice, it's a nice experience, I like these. If you prefer a bullet tip to a brush tip, check those out. Um, but the thing I was noticing with the Artify markers, and I know some people compl I complain that I compare markers, but with so many versions out right now for about the same price, I think it's important to know what you're getting into and see if it's something that you want to um, that you want to pursue. Something I noticed with the Artify markers. Now this one's all right um, because it's a triangular barrel. The nib needs to be put in. The chisel nib needs to be put in a certain way. And sometimes on these markers, I've noticed that the nibs are a little wonky. Like this one right here. It's like if I'm holding this, like any place I'm going to hold it normally, like the chisel nib is not is not set right. It's not in a comfortable position for me to hold and, and draw. So um, there's no consistency in how the chisel nibs were put in there. I think that's a little bizarre. And the nibs are difficult to remove. So I'd say pull it out and put it right back in. The price is cheap enough, go for it. But um, I found the nibs to be very difficult to remove without tweezers and I didn't have any tweezers. Like I can't pull that that nib out with my fingers. Usually I can pull the nib out and, re, and replace them. Um, and I wanted to pull the, the Oh, I think I got it. Boy, I can feel compressing in this. Now, the nibs do appear to be the dual-sided nibs like a hoo-hoo, um, which I think is actually good because I don't think these nibs are going to last, uh, like, indefinitely. Well, nothing lasts indefinitely, but I don't think they're going to last, 
like a like the Bienio old style. I don't see. I don't know about their new one, so I can't really. I can't really say for sure. It's a new. They are in a new bag and they have a new body now. Um, but I mean, these I can definitely compress them. They do not feel like a Copic nib. And oh my gosh, I don't like. I don't like doing that. But I have two colorless blenders, so I figured that would be a safe one to. Um, uh, to play with. So it does appear that the nibs are reversible and um, I think that's a little misleading advertising, ad advertisement for them to put on their site that they're the superior, in air quotes, nib when it seems to be the same thing. And there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, for the price, it's a, they're a good value. Um, so I want to also talk about some of the other pros to this set. Uh, the case. The case is really nice. So this is the 108 case and it has... Um, compartments that hold nine markers and their swatch chart has rows of nine markers and they're arranged very very um logically which you never see with budget markers so i like that i like that oftentimes your blending combinations are next to each other very um very easy to look at, very easy to figure out what three colors are going to blend together. Uh, they have a, like a color family, like Y, and that's going to incorporate the, um, the browns, the oranges, and the yellows. They've got, you know, red, green, blue. Uh, it's very easy to figure out what colors are going to go with what colors by both their swatch chart and by, and then you can put them in the box by their swatch chart and you kind of have the colors you're going to use together next to each other. I really like that. I also like that I can set this on its side and keep that as horizontal storage. Um, I can put it on a shelf and just leave it like that and pull from that and see everything I have. Uh, I might actually take the lid off of this and set it on a shelf by my drafting table upstairs for when I'm just kind of like playing around and not working but just I want to do some art. Um, I really like that. On the smaller box, the lid comes completely off. I kind of wish they did on the bigger one, but I mean, I'm sure I can pop that off. It's plastic. It's not a big deal. Um, these are these have four compartments that hold six. So again, it's very easy to put your skin tones together in a fashion that makes sense to you. The swatch here. Um, I mean, you could put it in the, the, the way they have the swatch here. I didn't. I put all my pinky ones together, all my cool undertones together, all my warm undertones together. You know, I just tried to make it make the most sense to me. There is only three duplicates between the 108 color set and the skin tone color set. So if you're, I, I think those would be the ones that people would probably mostly grab towards. Um, as you get to the other assorted sets, the 48 and the um, 80, you'll see some grays duplicated and a few other colors. But, um, you know, they're, they're, they're cheap enough that there's a not, you know, that if you really love the markers, you could grab the other ones and have a really good collection and have a few duplicates that hopefully would be colors that you would use anyway. So, um, so they wouldn't go to waste. So I do like that. I think for the price that the, these are good markers, 55 to, you know, 79 cents for a brush tip marker. You really can't beat that. I would say they're close in quality to a hoo-hoo. Just that, keep in mind, um, if you want to try a smaller set, you're going to have duplicates. I would say if you want to try a smaller set, get the skin tone set if you like to color or draw people. And uh, if you like that, then, then look at the color palette and see what you like. Because the color palettes are... Um, for the, actually, I don't think the 80... I don't think you can see the, a swatch of the 80 color palette on their website. I mean, on Amazon. That's where they sell them. So I'm not sure. I'm sure as these markers get more popular, there'll be swatches out. Now, the thing you have to, the one thing you want to think about when you're looking at the budget markers is sometimes without warning, they change. They change your color assortments. They change their, um, like what's in a pack. Sometimes they change the marker body types. So that's, you know, that's something that you see with, um, with the budget markers sometimes. Just something to keep in mind. And that goes for any budget marker type. I've seen them all change styles. Uh, even a who who has changed styles. So, um, so just kind of keep that in mind. Now let's look at some of the artwork that I colored with these. Uh, this is a, uh, this was funny. This, I actually had stamped out a bunch of images in this Bristol Smooth Visual Journal for my kids because we'd go on, um, we'd go on vacation or we'd just be, like I'd be coloring and the kids would want to do something. So I stamped a ton of things in this and then this was many years ago and um, then my daughter was cleaning her room and she's like, I don't want this anymore. You want it? And I thought, you know, this would be perfect for testing out markers. So, um, I, do, I colored these with, I used a skin tone set there for the skin and then I used colors from the 180 set for, um, for the rest. I did the same thing here to get just a couple different versions like a tan and a pale skin tone. Um, this I actually just used only the 108 set for this to see what the skin tone would be like and there I just kind of started that one and crapped out on it because I was getting bored <laughs> with testing markers but, uh, but they worked out really well. 
And um, I was also just comparing there some colors between the Bayanio and Altenew and uh, and Artify to confirm that they were, in fact, the, on the same color range. There's something weird, though. They have a set of 40. The Artify has a set of 40, and they have some GY colors, and some colors I don't see those um, those color code numbers on the other sets, but it does. they do seem to fall in line, so I don't know. It's it's almost like that was an experimental set. Maybe they're not going to keep carrying that, because it was kind of hard to find, but it did, it did come up in one of my searches on Amazon. So I just wanted to mention that. I probably would avoid that one, honestly, and just stick to the ones that seem to be their, their Canon style marker. So after doing some coloring um, examples, I decided to do some blending here. And I just did a few, just kind of grabbed a, a set of colors from each family and did some blends. You do have to be careful you don't oversaturate and bleed. This is the Ohuhu marker pad, which is a little bit better for blending. It's got a tiny bit of tooth to it. Not much, it's meant for markers, but um, it, it does handle blending a lot more, so I was just kind of playing in this. And I did a little rainbow blend here. Um, and I did notice that, the, that their swatch card, the and it didn't seem like it was going to be the case, but their swatch cards almost feel like a mixed media paper or like a cheap watercolor paper, like a cellulose, and I was kind of afraid to swatch on them. Um, but I think they swatched and blended really well, but the stuff looked a little bit lighter on here than they did on my Ohuhu marker pad and on my um, Bristol. They were a little closer to what I was getting on the Smooth Bristol, but just for, um, for reference, I recommend that you swatch this on the paper you typically use so you don't get any surprises, being like the pastels being a little bit darker on your paper than they would show up here. There was a beautiful selection of pastel colors. I feel like they covered the gamut really well. Um, they have a good set of warm and cool grays here, and uh, they almost have a little more, like, I, I don't really find much use to the green grays and blue grays if you got warm and cool grays. So if I had my druthers, I would get rid of those, the, the blue grays and green grays, and I would put in some more colors. Um, but overall, I think they have a really nice selection, including lots of pastel tones, which you can layer up for darker colors, and it just helps you blend. And I just use some of the pastel colors. You can see the swatches here. Um, and you can kind of see how they're a little bit darker on my on my Ohuhu paper here. Like, that's that color right there. You can see it's a little bit darker on this. Um, and I think I used that. That looks about the same. I think I used that one, which looks more like that one. And, you know, just see they show up just a smidgen darker on the Ohuhu. That one does. I think I used that one. And that one doesn't look a little bit darker. But, um, you know, colors look a little bit different on different papers. That's a roundabout way of saying that, isn't it? So that was that color there. And that was 502, I think. So, you know, just looks a little bit darker there. That's all there is to it. I just did a few quick little skin blendings there. I already knew they blended well because I had done the, um, on the little people over here so I could see that they blended well. And then I did an illustration um, of a cupcake. Let me zoom in a little bit. I did have to use a little bit of colored pencil on to bring it together because, um, and that's not the fault of the markers, I just, I was a little lazy and I sketched it quick and then um, I should have paid more attention to the designs and the frosting. It's like kind of a rainbow cupcake. Um, I'll probably post a tutorial on this because I did film it when I was doing it. But, um, but I like the layering, uh, I like the layering, I like the blending. They were very easy to use. I think the nibs are, good for the price. You know, they're they're not as good as the Altenew that run on the same color um, system. They're not the same as as good as the old Bayanio, which I don't know if they've changed the nibs since their new release. Mine are about three years old, two or three years old. Um, they're not as good as Copics, but they're pretty good. My biggest, the biggest con for those would be that, um, well, the nib, the brush nib, they're not the, uh, they're not the rubbery nib. They're more of the uh, felt nib. Uh, but also the fact that you might have some issues with those wonky chisel nibs. If you like to use a chisel nib, like this one is off as well, there's no consistency in how the chisel nibs were laid in. And I like to use my chisel nib. I use them a lot. So, um, so there's that. And I think if you, if you are, if your brush nib does wear out and you flip it around and that side wears out, which I don't think that would happen before your ink is done, but if it did and you had to rely on the chisel nib, with it being a triangular, triangular barrel, you're going to have to pull that out and put it in just so, and it just might be a thing. Um, I do, I would say, yes, you could go ahead and replace your brush nib with the Altenew brush nib. You can order those um, over on altenew.com. I'll try to remember to put a link in there. Um, they're the same size. It's the same body. You could replace that nib. 
And um, but if you wanted like a brush and a bullet nib, you could either get the Alta new ones for a very similar product, same same ink, better nib, um, or you could do the Artix Alp markers, and then you could uh, you if you didn't want the chisel, you could always replace it with a brush nib. So um, unfortunately, they are felt nib, but hey, I would say that um, for the price, they're pretty good. You know what, I'm also going to look here, I want to look at that chisel and make sure that is in fact, you know what, the chisel nib, I think the hole for the chisel nib might be a little bit bigger. So I'm not sure if you can replace the brush, let me see, you know what, we're going to do a little, we're going to do a little experiment here. I'm going to take the colorless blenders, do I have these marked right? Yes. Okay, I'm going to take the colorless blenders, because I've got two in the Artix. Artix is, you know, they are generous with the colorless blenders. Um, I'm going to take out the chisel nib of the Alp. I'm going to move my picture here so I don't... Oh, be careful when you open these markers. Same thing happened with my Uhuhus, the, the brush ones. Don't open them over your artwork, because you can get some spray. I did get some spray. So I'm going to pull out the chisel nib on my Artix Alp, and I'm going to pull out the brush nib on my Artifly blender, and I'm going to see if they fit. Let's look at the hole size. You know what? They don't look that different. So let's just see if we can do that. Oh yeah, guys, you can do that with your Artix Alp markers. So um, if you would like, geez, I want a, I want a bullet tip and I want a brush tip. The, you know, for whatever reason you don't want to do the Alta News, you would get the, or you already have the Artix and you just want to replace some. Yeah, you can replace the chisel with the brush there. I like that. That's neat. Okay, um, I know that's not what this this review was about, but I thought that was interesting, and um, I like to I like to experiment anyway. Oh my gosh, I hope I don't damage this nib because boy oh boy, it does not feel like it likes this at all, guys. Yeah, I would not recommend just willy nilly messing around with your with your marker nibs, but um, I don't think there's a real strong odor on these markers, but I'm not terribly bothered by. Alcohol marker smells. Um, they're nowhere near as stinky as a Sharpie if you need a reference point. I think they smell, well, let me grab a Copic. We'll, we'll do a sniff test here and see. Um, I'll take a whiff of a Copic here. Very mild smell. We'll do a whiff of, they look about the same color. Slightly more, not a lot though, very slightly. So. There's that. Um, so there you have it. I do recommend them. I think they're nice. I really like the case. Um, I really love the color selection. I like the good selection of pastels. Swatch on your own paper. Um, watch out for those chisel nibs because they are a little wonky. And if you like to use your chisel nib, then you're gonna want to uh, you're gonna want to reseat some of them. But um, yeah, overall, I think for 55 cents a marker, they're a great value. And for that case too, I mean, you can definitely reuse the case when you're done. Where you could, you know, refill them with your Alta New inks. They get the job done. They're, I, I would find them very, I would say they're very comparable to a Uhuhu and other markers like that. Um, not quite as nice as the old style Biennial or the Alta New, but the same coloring system. And um, that's kind of interesting. I've been kind of figuring out what markers use what system. And the only two ones I could find that have some sort of, um, have some sort of commonality would be all the ones that are on the Shinhan system, which is most of the budget markers, and then these, the Bayanyo and the Art and Fly and Altenu that all seem to run on the other one. All these, like, all the kind of name brand ones have their own system, it seems like, but, um, but it's just kind of interesting. I find that sort of thing interesting. I'm just looking at my list to see if I've forgotten anything. Um, no, I think I have, I think I've said it all. I also didn't notice any weird shift other than just going a little bit lighter when they dry. I didn't notice any colors like going from like warm pink to cool pink too much. Although you do often find that in your pink. So, you know, that's why you swatch them just to make sure. But lovely selection of colors. I recommend them. I think the price is good as long as the price doesn't jack up. These cases are really awesome for, uh, you know, for basically getting for free with your markers. And I, I like that it helps keep them organized rather than them just being loose in a big bag, which like a, which a hoo-hoo is. I like a hoo-hoo as well. I like the case better for the Artify. It just makes it, it makes it easier to keep things together and less thinking when you're coloring because sometimes you really have to grab that next marker quick to execute a blend before things dry and this is going to help you do that. So um, yeah, I give them a thumbs up 
And I hope you found this very helpful. And if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below and I will try to help you out. I will link these up in the video description so you can find them. They will be Amazon affiliate links, which means if you purchase them, I get a commission at no cost to you. Thank you so much for watching. Please give me a thumbs up if you enjoy product reviews. Until next time, happy crafting.